Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. For any new folks here or returning folks that recently started watching my channel, you see a lot of CNC videos coupled with CAD and CAM. But what you might not know is this channel actually started with a focus on 3D printing. Now those first videos were pretty bad. The camera was bad, the lighting was bad, and the audio was bad. And honestly, I wasn't the exuberant, dynamic, charming person that I am now on screen. Though I started making videos about 3D printing, the true goal for the channel was a general maker channel where I could do videos about 3D printing, CNC, electronics, software development, and all things that I'm interested in, and things that I also have background and skills in. I won't go into the theory of YouTube here, but I will say generally that content creators make their best content when it is a subject that they are passionate about. I think that's true about any job, whether it's your full-time gig or a part-time hustle. So today I am expanding my micro niche a little more and focusing on 3D printing, but with a twist. Specifically how you can couple 3D printing with woodworking to leverage the power of additive manufacturing to boost productivity, decrease costs, and even help make better products. Before I get too far into this video, let's briefly discuss the differences between additive manufacturing and subtractive manufacturing. As the name implies, additive manufacturing is the process of adding material to build something. 3D printers make products by adding material layer by layer until the final product is complete. By contrast, subtractive manufacturing is the process of removing materials to make something. Tools like CNC start with stock material and remove that material to reveal the final product. Each of the different processes have pros and cons, which I am not going to cover here today. If you are interested in a more broad discussion about digital manufacturing, check out my four-part series that I did covering the end-to-end -end process. It's great for beginners and seasoned professionals alike. I will leave a link in the description if you're interested in watching that video series. Now that we understand the differences between how the two technologies make products, let's discuss how they complement each other. In the abstract, a 3D printer is just a CNC machine that adds materials rather than removes it. Based on my research, the multi-axis CNC machines that we know today were created in the 1950s, whereas the 3D printers that we know today were not invented until the early 1980s. But 3D printing did not take off until the 2010 timeframe when the original patents for fused deposition modeling expired and became widely available to the public. As an aside, if there is any question about the power of open source and crowdsourcing technological advances, 3D printing is a shining example. The technology had an exceptionally shallow market penetration with 3D printers costing around $300,000 with very limited applications. It wasn't until the patents expired and the RepRap community emerged that home 3D printing took off. Since then, it has become a billion dollar industry with new innovation and advances coming almost daily. The entire additive manufacturing space was clearly held back by a handful of patents that kept the technologies locked up for more than 20 years. But the good news is those days are over and now we can purchase high quality printers for as low as $250. So at this point, you're probably wondering what we can do with a 3D printer and why it all matters. Well, I find myself using 3D printers in three primary ways. First, creating materials that will be difficult to machine with a CNC or create by hand. Anything that has complex geometries that will require three or four axis CNC to make or requires more precision and accuracy that I can achieve with my hand tools. I've literally designed and printed hundreds of parts that fall into this category. Some are available for free in places like Thingiverse or printables, and some I've just used for myself. 
Sometimes it's because it's a one-off and sometimes it's because the prototype just didn't pan out for some reason. The second area I find using 3D printers for is making tools or useful items for the shop or the house. There are literally thousands of designs and models for woodworking and household items that provide everyday value. The third area I use 3D printing for is to make replacement parts. This is when something breaks or the part is not available or is too costly to purchase. I will jump into Fusion 360, replicate the part, and print it out. Sometimes it works well, sometimes not so much. But it is always an option that I have in my hip pocket, something that I can't say that has been available in the past. Earlier I mentioned using a 3D printer for making tools and projects for everyday use, and that is the focus of this video. Some of the tools I've either found online or designed myself that improve my life in some way, either by making me more efficient, increasing my organization, or simply just helping out. Let's jump into it. I'm gonna start with some of the models that I have created and are available for download, and then branch out to some of the models that I've downloaded and created, and some models that I have yet to print. But I still think that they will provide value. First, we have some parts that I've created for the Onefinity CNC, but many of them can be used with other CNCs. I've created some end cap covers to cover up the tubes on the Onefinity, as well as protect the wires that are coming out of the front of the machine. These are simple little devices that only take a few minutes to print, but really level up your machine. In the case of the wire caps, they actually provide a great deal of protection for sensitive parts. I highly recommend you print them if you have a Onefinity. Next, I've created a rack to hold T-Track parts. This specific design holds four clams, but you can use it to hold anything that has a T-bolt in it. I also have a fully parametric design available on my Etsy page if you're interested in customizing one for your own needs. Finally, we have a variant of that four gang holder, but it is just a single slot. These print in less than 20 minutes and you can put them just about anywhere. I find them very useful and they're great for one-off little things that you need to hang up around your shop. Pivoting a little bit, I have a couple designs purely for the organization of my CNC parts. I created a tray to hold all my clamps for my X-Carve, as well as a smaller tray for my CNC bits. I chose to 3D print these, but you can also mill them with the CNC as well. Finally, I've created countless hose adapters for my woodworking tools, shop vacs, and etc. It did take me some time to dial in the diameter for the hose adapters, but in the end, these adapters have survived years of abuse in my shop without any issues. All of these designs are available for free, both on Inventables.com as well as Thingiverse. Link in the description below. Before I get on to designs from other makers, let's take a few minutes to talk about some of my failed designs. Yes, sadly, not everything works out the way I wanted, and so I bring you some of the great things that resulted in a swing and a miss. First, I love this idea, but it just proved impractical, and that is a 3D printed sanding block. This is the second version of the design that is a little bit more simplified than the first. It's easier to print and much less assembly. But why was it a miss? Well, it takes over three hours to print, needs Velcro added to the bottom to hold the sandpaper on, and it's not very flexible. It's made out of hard plastic. The problem comes in because you can purchase a two pack of sanding blocks from some softer materials from Amazon for about $10. Sometimes it's just easier to spend a little money than make something yourself. And this was one of those times. Next is an area that I'm not willing to call failure on yet, but I have not yet achieved the results that I'm looking for. And that is clamps for my CNC. This specific design is literally version 14, and it's still not working exactly like I want. The body has a tendency to flex when I screw it down, and the holding force is not very great, which makes it a not so great clamp. I see tons of these for sale on Etsy, and they seem very popular, so I believe they can work. I just have not been able to nail the design for my use case. Now, I know someone will ask, why don't I just purchase some? Well, this is one of the cases where what I've seen online doesn't quite meet what I'm looking for. 
the spacing between my T-Track on my CNC is a little bit wider than the average bear. So what I need is a clamp that has a longer body than what I've seen available for purchase. So that is why I tried to design my own. And I think that is ultimately why I think it's failed a little bit because it's longer, it flexes more and doesn't hold as well. Now I've been working on this design for over a year now and it's probably not the best use of my time, but I can't get past that nagging feeling that I will nail the design at some point in the future. It's just who I am. The final design I would like to share with you is both a hit and a miss. That is the base for the arm that holds my vacuum hose for the CNC. It was both a hit and a miss because I designed it, printed it, and used it for about a year. And then one day, I guess I pulled that hose just a little too aggressively and the entire base just split in half. <laughs> No worries, I thought, I would just print another one, which is what I did. And about a week later, it broke again. So I drilled a hole into the wasteboard, put the pole into my MDF, and it's been working perfectly now for about a year or two. Now that's not optimal, drilling a hole into your desk, but it hasn't failed. So the lesson learned here is 3D printing can be great, but you need to be aware of its limitations. FDM printers all print using layers, and those layers can separate under mechanical stresses. It is completely dependent on the orientation of the layers and the type of stress, as well as the type of filament. I did play around with the base a little bit to try and change the orientation of the layers, but it turns out this specific design gets stresses from all directions. So in the end, the part was just a little bit too sensitive to the mechanical stresses that I was applying to it, and so, I just deemed it a failure and I've moved on with my day. Okay, enough with my successes and failures. Let's move on to other designs that I like and I recommend. I've already done a video on some of these, so I will leave a link to that above and below if you want a deeper dive into them. Now, in no particular order, let's get on with it. First is the light ring from Rowdy Roman, total game changer for me. Second is the drag chain from Muddy Feet, super useful if you have a one infinity CNC. Next are the rail wipers from John Carlos, great for keeping your machine clean if you have the one infinity as well. Next is the dust shoe holder from John at Huntington Builds. I really love this thing and I really, really wouldn't know what to do without it. Next, pivoting a little bit, we're going to get into some woodworking tools, and I'm going to start with some corner clamps. These are very similar to the much more expensive clampet squares and triangles that you can get from one of the well-known woodworking tool manufacturers. Now, these are made out of plastic instead of aluminum like the other ones, um, but they work just as well, and if you happen to bend or break one, you can just simply print another pair, which I think is part of the usefulness here of the 3D printing. The next thing I'd like to point out is something that maybe is not as polished as some of the ones you can get online, but they're great to have around, and that is a glue roller. I use glue rollers almost exclusively whenever I'm making cutting boards and other things in the shop, and I find them exceptionally valuable. Next are tool caddies. There are literally hundreds of these designs out there, so simply go out, find one that works for you, and print it out. Closely related to the tool caddies is this saw stop fence drawer that I saw a video about not so long ago. I really thought this was one of the most novel uses of 3D printing yet. You just print this little drawer, slide it to the end of your saw stop fence, and you're off to the races. It's really great for storing pencils and little bits and things that you're going to use around the table saw. Next is something that goes along with table saws and band saws, and those are feather boards. Quick and easy to print, easy to replace if something happens. Continuing with the theme of table saws, we have some saw blade holders. Now there are tons of different designs out there as well for these, so just pick one that works for you and print it out. Moving right along, we have depth gauges, which I find these invaluable at the table saw and the router as well. These 3D printed ones are significantly more inexpensive than the ones that you can buy from Amazon or some of the other manufacturers online, and you can tailor them to your specific needs, only printing the ones you need or printing ones that maybe are not available in the pre-manufactured form. 
Another tool that I have yet to print for myself but is just stupid simple and stupid useful is a centering guide. These are particularly useful if you're trying to find the center of a board. You just uh, put it on, you twist it, put a pencil in the middle, and it marks a line in the center of your board every single time, and no measuring. And so like I said, I haven't had a chance to print one for myself, but I definitely need to because I need it all of the time. So as you can see, there is a seemingly infinite supply of parts, tools, and items that you can print at home for woodworking and for making. It seems that every day I stumble across yet another item that will level up my woodworking just one more notch. I have curated many of these tool collections on my printable site, link in the description for the full list. If you're interested in tools under $10 that will also level up your woodworking, well check out this video right here. Once again, thank you for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired.